Hey game developers, Bala from Zenfinity.net here and welcome back to another Unity tutorial and in this one we're going to be creating a window manager that allows us to change our resolution um, and then in the future episodes we're going to be creating a system that allows us to also change the full screen mode and then it will also let us reset the settings automatically so that if the settings are messed up and the player can't actually appropriately hit the buttons uh, then there's no sweat and they can just wait five seconds and it will fix it automatically. Okay, so with that said, why don't we go ahead and get started. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and create the script here. And after we create the script, we'll just go ahead and start with only changing the resolution and move on from there. I'm gonna call this window manager.cs and I'm gonna go ahead and double click it to open it in Visual Studio. And I've loaded my Visual Studio, so here we'll see it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete our update function. And the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and create some attributes here. Uh, we're going to have a player pref reference and we're going to have uh, basically like a text and some other options for our resolutions here. So uh, it'll make sense in a, little, uh, in a second here. Okay, so to begin with, I'll create a region called attributes. If you don't know what a region is, um, a region is a setting in Visual Studio or basically a marker that allows us to, for one, we can fold here. Uh, so that any code in here will no longer appear when we fold it. Um, and two, it just makes it very easy for us to organize. So this way we don't have to, I don't know, look at a lot of code at once. Okay, so we'll start with a region that says player pref key constants. Okay, and we're only going to be putting one of these in here right now, which is the resolution one, right? So what that's going to be called is well, before we call anything, we'll write in our massive keywords here. And then it'll be in all caps, resolution, underscore, pref, underscore key. Okay, and we're going to set this equal to a lowercase resolution. Um, and if you already have a pref key, that's resolution that's being used somewhere else for some reason, uh, make sure you don't because uh, player prefs will overwrite uh, each other and that's why it is a constant because we want one resolution key paired to one resolution value, um, you know, uh, for now, obviously. So make sure that that is a unique key, okay? Uh, and now what we'll do is move on to our resolution attributes here resolution okay uh, and so in here we're gonna have a text an array of resolutions and then an integer for the current resolution index okay so private text oops sorry and you're gonna need to include why don't we go ahead and do that right now is write all the includes that we need up here we're gonna need to write uh, actually only add using unity engine Dot UI and ensure the other three are here because we are going to be using all of those uh, and nothing else. Okay, uh, so we have a private text and before I write that I'm going to write serialize field because we want this to show up in the Unity inspector but I don't want it to be public because there's no real reason for it to be. Okay, so private text resolution text. Okay, uh, and then we have a private uh, resolution array of resolutions. Right, and uh, the way Unity works is um, at runtime it will generate a or an array of resolutions. So we're just going to be storing that in our variable here so that we don't uh, keep grabbing them. Okay, uh, and then we have a private int current resolution. Well, that was a mess. Resolution index equals zero. Okay, um, the reason for that is we obviously start at the zeroth resolution because uh, a couple of reasons. For one, resolution, a lot of people don't know, is very uh, performance intensive. So if somebody's running on a very bad computer that can handle a 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution, for example, uh, and you start at the end of the indices, um, that computer will have very poor performance uh, you know, if it's obviously having trouble running the program, but if it's a very simple game, um, it won't really matter. But I would always recommend make sure your players can start at a low graphic intensity so that they don't have a problem with running your game or being able to run it. Okay, uh, so that's all we need for our resolution attributes right now. Uh, we can go ahead and move on to writing some uh, functions here, right? So the first uh, couple I'm going to write are just helpers, and these are helpers that I keep in my personal engine, but I've simplified them uh, to write them 
in this uh, video. So basically what they do is get a wrapped index when we cycle through uh, the resolution uh, array here. So let me go ahead and begin with, I guess there's get next wrapped index, right? So private int get next wrapped index. And there's a way to skip this part. Um, if you don't feel like writing what I'm writing or it's too confusing, you can just go ahead and say if the index is greater than the array's length, then just restart and vice versa. So uh, if that doesn't make sense yet, it will in a little bit. So I list uh, t collection and then int current index. Okay. Uh, and then we're going to just have one for get previous index, right? So get previous wrapped index. Okay, so these are fairly simple, right? So if collection dot count is less than one, then we want to return zero. Um, that's just like a safety check. Okay, and then return uh, current index plus one, and then modulo uh, collection dot count. So modulo is it basically it returns the remainder of a division uh, algorithm. I was going to say algorithm of a division equation, right? So uh, so like if this is nine and then the counts uh, eight, it will return one. So so that just means like the beginning plus one, right? Uh, okay, so then why don't we go ahead and go to the next one here? So uh, so if collection dot count is less than one, we're gonna return zero. And if current index and this is kind of a hacky solution here. Uh, minus one. It's not really hacky, but just not elegant, right? So all we're doing is checking <clears throat> if we go backward once, uh, then if we're negative, then we just want to restart at the front, right? So we want to go to the count. Okay, so we're going to return collection dot count minus one. Boom. So that makes it wrap. Okay, and then we're going to return current index minus one modulo uh, collection dot count. Okay, um, so you don't really need to worry about what these are doing. Just know that when we call these with a current index, the get next one will either get the next index, so plus one, or it will get the beginning of the array. And then the previous wrapped index will do vice versa that. So if we're at zero, we subtract one, then we hit negative one. We're like, no, we don't want negative one. We'd rather have count minus one. Okay, so sorry to actually add these uh, to the uh, tutorial, but I figured it was better than just tossing in messy code. So I'll do region, uh, I guess I'll call this misc helpers, and region, uh, and these will be called the Oops, region uh, index wrap helpers. And I'll just copy this end region. Okay, uh, I'll fold that, fold this. Uh, and now we can just go ahead and move on to actually cycling the resolution. So let's go ahead and minimize our start function and I'll make a region for resolution, resolution cycling. Okay, uh, and in here we're gonna have, uh, I believe, like four functions or so. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and start with um, setting resolution, then we'll do next and previous. Okay, so private void set resolution text resolution resolution. And that will of course let us uh, see what resolution we've cycled onto. Um, so we actually know which one we've picked. So that will be resolution text dot text equals resolution dot width, right? Plus resolution uh, dot height. But in between there, well, you know, this is really bothering me, so I'm going to fix this first. Resolution, uh, and then we'll do an X, and then we'll do a plus, right? So 1920 by, that'd be the by. Uh, 1080, for example. Okay, so let's move on to our 
actually, I believe these can be, I don't know, these should, these should be public. So public uh, void set next resolution. OK. Um, so what we're going to do is set our current resolution index, right? So current resolution index equals get next wrapped index. And we'll use resolutions and current resolution index. OK. And now we just want to set our resolution text. So I'll copy that. And we'll say um, with resolutions and then current resolution index. Boom. OK, so that's all we do for our next one. Then why don't we just go ahead and copy this. Sorry about that. To be our previous, oops, set previous resolution. OK, and then this can pretty much just be uh, get previous wrapped index. OK, uh, everything else stays the same. Oh, I <laughs> put that in the wrong one. Sorry about that. Get next, get previous, and then get previous right here. OK, now we're done. Um, so our buttons will not do the exact opposite of what they're supposed to. And uh, we have our resolution cycling here. Uh, we can actually go ahead and visualize this um, if I just put these inside of our buttons here. Uh, and then we can move on to actually applying the resolution. So what I'll do is go over to Unity uh, and I'll go to our... I'll make, a, I'll make a game object here. So let's make an empty game object called... Uh, I'll hit F2 to rename. Window Manager. Uh, the component Window Manager. Okay, and our resolution text will of course be this resolution text. Okay, so I'll drag that uh, over to this script. Okay, um, and now what I'll do is click on our scene, and these are buttons, right? So this is the previous button. I'll add an event to its on click. I'll drag in the window manager, and then under no function, I'll pick window manager and then set previous resolution. Okay, and I'll do the same for the next one, but obviously with the respective function. OK, so set previous and set next. OK, so we set all of our functions and we set our references in the inspector. So why don't we go ahead and just see if this works. And it doesn't because we haven't actually used our start function to you know, set our collection here. So why don't we go ahead and do that now. OK, so under our window manager, we have a start function. So we can say resolutions equals screen dot resolutions okay and that's all we have to do for that um, now we just want to go ahead and set some defaults here right so current resolution index equals player prefs dot get int with the resolution pref key and resolutions uh, actually we'll set this to zero by default uh, so what that means is that it will get this by a key, so whatever our resolution is set to, it will grab that value. Otherwise, it'll just use zero as the default value, kind of like what we did back in the attribute. Okay, um, so I'm just going to stop right there and let us um, try testing this again. And yeah, so um, what we see is it starts at 640 by 480, and then we can go all the way up and we hit 1920 and then it restarts and vice versa. That's what the wrapped index is for. Okay, perfect. So we have our, we're getting our resolutions appropriately and setting the text so our player will actually know which resolution he's attempting to pick. Now we wanna make sure he can actually apply that uh, resolution. Okay, so what I'll do now is go ahead and move on to actually writing these uh, apply resolution functions here. So under resolution cycling, I'll make a region for apply resolution. OK, uh, and then in apply resolution, uh, we'll have a set. So set and apply resolution using a, an integer of new resolution index. Oops. Uh, I'm going to leave that empty for now, uh, and we'll have two more functions here. So apply current resolution, 
right? So what that will do is call apply resolution, which we'll write underneath that. And this one will just take an actual resolution typed object. Okay, so we'll begin with writing the uh, resolution uh, apply resolution function here. So set resolution text resolution, uh, and now we'll do screen dot set resolution resolution dot width, uh, and then height. And then screen dot full screen. Okay. Now we'll do player prefs dot set integer resolution pref key. Uh, there it is. And then current resolution index. Okay. So uh, this stores it in the player preferences so that we keep the resolution the next time we start the game. Uh, and this will just physically change the resolution, not in the editor, but only in a build. Um, and of course, this is the function we wrote earlier to change the text, only because uh, we might be using apply resolution somewhere else. Um, and yeah, we'll see uh, about that in the future. And so right now what I'll do is apply resolution, um, and then resolutions of, of course, current resolution index. Um, and of course, resolutions. Okay, uh, and now we can uh, actually write our set and apply resolution function. So current uh, resolution index equals new resolution index. Uh, and then we'll just call this function here. Boom. Okay, so now we're done with uh, our apply resolution functions. Uh, and we can actually test out applying our resolution, right? So um, why don't we go ahead and begin with making an apply changes function at the bottom here because it will later include our window mode. So what I'll do is write public void apply changes and I'll do set and apply resolution of current resolution index. Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to unity here, so unity, um, and then in our apply button here, uh, this is not a button yet, so I'll add a button component. Oh wait, actually that's the text. So there's an apply button uh, parent here, so click on that. Uh, and then <laughs> that also is not a button, so I'll add a button. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is go ahead and just create uh, an event here. I'll drag in the window manager and not the event system. <laughs> okay, uh, and now we'll do window manager dot apply changes. I'd save and it'll hit play. And of course, we'll see nothing happen, but it was on this index. And you know what? Notice how that uh, is changing. I'll go ahead and change that really quick. So why don't we go ahead and go to Visual Studio again. And in our start function, uh, why don't we just go ahead and write, uh, I think it should be set. Uh, yeah, actually, let's set resolution text here. Set resolution text. Uh, I guess resolutions of current resolution index. Oops. Okay. Now I'll go back here. Um, and now when we hit play, we should see this update to, yeah, the first one. Okay. And what I'll do is go ahead and go to player settings now because I want to disable that uh, dialogue in the beginning here. And I believe that's called the resolution, yeah, display resolution dialog. I'll disable that. And that's that Unity starter that you see whenever you launch a Unity game uh, if the developers did not feel like adding a uh, settings button. And I'm guilty of that in my first game. So the second one does not have that. So I'm going to go ahead and build this now. Uh, and I'll make a, I guess I'll make a builds folder here. And uh, I'll just call it main.exe and I'll hit save. Oh, we see made with Unity. Okay, um, so I can obviously change the resolution and whatnot. Okay, if I hit apply, it changes it. Okay, so we see 1600 by 900. Now, what if I go ahead and run the game again, right? So I'll open this in Explorer, uh, builds main.exe, and we should see the same resolution unless we did something wrong. Okay, so the resolution is the same. So that is it for actually changing the resolution. 
um, and we have the window mode here, but we're not going to be doing that in this video. We'll actually do that in a later video on how to edit the window mode and then also reset the settings. So I will see you in the next episode and have an awesome day.